Hello everybody, my name is Pixel and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Today I thought we could take a quick look at Neon Noir, a benchmark utility created by the talented developers over at Crytek that demonstrates real-time ray tracing running on DirectX 11 without the need for any dedicated hardware acceleration. That's right, all the ray tracing in this demo slash benchmark is done via software and so all the footage in this video has been recorded at 1440p on our Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 5700 XT graphics card and we recorded runs using both the ultra and very high presets. Now, if you're new to gaming or you've not really been keeping up to date with this whole ray tracing thing, it may actually be rather difficult to know exactly what makes the footage in this video so special. Basically, one of the most difficult things to pull off in video games, at least using current rendering methods, is reflecting stuff that is not currently visible on screen. The reason for this is that when we render a frame, we only actually render what is currently visible in front of the camera and from that fixed position in 3D space. So, for all intents and purposes, anything that's not currently visible on screen technically doesn't exist, at least not in a visible sense. Luckily for us though, there are quite a few techniques that can be used to get around this, though pretty much all of them have their own limitations and performance related costs. So when you're able to see the kind of reflections that we have on display in this benchmark, it's a sign that something very special is happening, even if you don't find the reflections themselves all that impressive from a visual standpoint. The reality is, a great many of the graphical effects that we see in games today are actually just cheap imitations of what is actually happening in real life, and while they can certainly look very impressive, they definitely lack accuracy. Ray tracing, on the other hand, aims to bring our current understanding of how the physical world works and bring that to video games running in real time. Now, before we go any further, I want to quickly let you know that Walt Disney's Animation Studios actually uploaded a very good video on the topic a few years back, explaining exactly how ray tracing works. So, if you're fairly new to the concept or maybe you just want a quick refresher, I recommend that you check out that video for yourselves and I've left a link to it in the description below. They do a great job of showing the process in a very easy to digest format and it doesn't really require any prior technical knowledge to be able to understand what they are talking about. But anyway, if you've watched a live action movie in the past few years, there is a very good chance that you've already witnessed the benefits of ray tracing without even noticing it. Put simply, ray tracing is pretty much superior to rasterization, which is the current method used in most games, in just about every conceivable way bar one, performance. Even just a few years back, the idea of ray tracing in real time for video games was pretty much a pipe dream. However, due to recent advances in both hardware and software, the inclusion of ray tracing in games is starting to become much more viable. One of the major advantages that ray tracing has over the more current methods used for reflections is its simplicity. I mean, I would be willing to bet that there are many talented game artists out there that could match and likely even best most of the visuals that we see in this benchmark using clever graphical trickery. It's even possible that they could do so while also improving the performance. The problem is, doing so requires an awful lot of time and effort and not to mention bodging together multiple techniques that each have their own limitations and downsides such as inaccuracies and artifacts. Whereas ray tracing on the other hand, in theory, would all but eliminate this extra workload and thus massively increase the efficiency of game development. And while there are still some very noticeable artifacts related to ray tracing, most of these will be solved or at least vastly improved by simply being able to fire out more rays, something that should become more and more possible as the hardware advances and the software matures. Now, while I did just say that it should be possible to have a talented artist use graphical trickery in order to produce a scene that looks this impressive, there are still a few exceptions. This Smash Mirror, for instance, has many shards that each slightly tilt in different directions. This is something that would be incredibly expensive to emulate using current techniques and even then would likely exhibit some small inaccuracies. And here we have some real-time reflections from a curved surface, something that's not really possible, at least not accurately, using non-ray trace techniques. Even the drone in these shots exhibits some rather awesome looking reflections, especially those on the glossy plastic body and the shiny chrome arms that connect the body to the propellers. If you look very carefully, you can even see how the drone is able to reflect itself and the distorted reflections on the chrome arms allow them to take on an almost photorealistic look, especially when we shrink down that image to the point where the smaller pixels are able to compensate for the lower resolution of said reflections. Unfortunately, due to the relatively low number of rays used in this benchmark, there is still a need to sample data across multiple frames in order to prevent the image from breaking up. In most stationary shots, this is not really a problem. However, while in motion, the reflections are prone to ghosting. Again, this is something that in time could be improved by simply firing more rays as more rays would produce a fuller image that would require less samples to achieve stability. 
While this is visible throughout most of the benchmark, they stand out most during this scene where the reflective slats on the side of this building start to rotate. Now, I don't want to get too tangled up in the technology on display here, as I'm really not qualified enough to accurately describe what is going on behind the scenes. But what I can tell you is that what we are seeing here on a technical level is very impressive, especially considering the frame rate that we are able to push out on a GPU that does not have hardware accelerated ray tracing. Regardless of how good or bad you feel this demo looks visually, there is no denying that from a technical perspective, what is on display here is very impressive. Not only in terms of software development, but also from a look how far we have come in terms of raw compute performance kind of perspective. I mean, look, I don't think there's much, if any doubt, that ray tracing is going to be a big part of gaming's future. The question is, to what degree and what kind of timescale are we really looking towards? What this benchmark offers is a glimpse into the technology that is going to be powering a lot of the next-gen games, and I, for one, am very excited to see where all this leads. If you would like to check out this benchmark for yourselves, you can do so by going over to the link that is down in the description below. With that said, that is once again going to be me done for today, so if you are new around here, please do consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. Also, if you like this sort of content, then how about leaving us a like? And if you disliked it, there's a button for that too, and all we ask is that you let us know why you disliked it down in the comment section below so we can try and improve in future. Beyond that, if you've got any questions, suggestions, or feedback, we would also love to hear from you as well, so please leave them, again, down in the comment section below. Also, are you excited for the future of ray tracing? Are there any games that you would love to see get a ray traced upgrade? I want to know your thoughts on ray tracing in video games, so please let us know. Let's get a conversation going. But anyway, from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you here again very soon. So until then, we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.